Hey Flight Sim fans, Richard here with another Wing It Flight Sim video. And in this one, in case you're wondering why I'm not actually seated at the flight simulator, we're doing something a little different today. We're not actually going to do anything on the simulator. We're not doing a flight. We're not doing anything with X-Plane. We had a bunch of questions on our three monitor setup video. So we decided to do a video to answer those questions. And it's coming up right after the intro. All right, we are back. And first of all, if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for checking us out. If you're a returning visitor, thanks so much for coming back. And if you are a current subscriber, thanks so much for supporting the channel. And finally, if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and smash the bell so you don't miss a Wing It Flight Sim video. All right, on to the video. The first question comes from Tub9988X. That question, what computer are you using, PC or Mac? Okay, we are using an upgraded Mac Studio with a 20-core CPU, 64-core GPU, 128 gigs, of unified memory uh, or RAM if you're not familiar with uh, Mac lingo um, and four gigs on the hard drive. All right, the next question, question two comes from BritFrog and they asked after they switched from X-Plane 11 to X-Plane 12, they're only getting about 20 frames a second where in X-Plane 11, they were getting 55 to 65 frames a second. First of all, it seems like, from what I've re been reading in some of the forums, everyone is having issues with X-Plane 12 and the frame rate slowing down. So we're just going to have to, at least for now, accept some of that. A um, couple of other issues, though. Um, it can depend on what aircraft you're using. For example, I use a couple of aircraft uh, that won't run natively on Apple Silicon, so you have to run Rosetta. In case you're wondering what Rosetta is, if you're not familiar, it's an Apple app that allows games that otherwise would not play on Apple Silicon, it allows them to run on Apple Silicon. So I don't care what Apple says, it slows the frame rate down. I'm getting about half the frame rate when I use Rosetta than when I don't have to use Rosetta in X-Plane 12. Second issue, and this is a big deal, Honestly, the frame rate isn't really what you're looking for. The frame rate isn't as important as how does the game look? Does it look smooth when you're running it? Does it look smooth when you're flying? Does it look smooth when you're taxiing through airports? If it looks smooth, then really who cares what the frame rate is telling you up in the top left-hand corner? The most important thing is how it looks. And I'm sure it's going to vary based on your CPU, your GPU, um, and your computer. So 20 frames per second with, with uh, BritFrog may look pretty crappy. On my computer, on my Mac Studio, 20 frames a second looks fantastic. There's not any kind of um, jitteriness in it at all. Um, there's no dropped frames. Uh, even down to 15 frames a second, it really looks pretty good. All right, John F9551 asks question three, 3A, 3B, and 3C, several questions. So we're going to answer all of them for you. Um, first one, what monitor stand are you using? Okay, we are using the TK Racing Rig Elite in green with the monitor stand that costs $999, so basically $1,000. Um, this is exclusive to Micro Center, so you can only get this uh, monitor stand and cockpit rig setup from Micro Center. They can be bought separately, uh, but if they're bought separately, you can only get them in black. And the rig is $649, and the stand, the three monitor stand, is $249. So, if you buy them separately, or if you buy them in black, it's actually a little cheaper. So it's about $950 as opposed to $1,000. But the green is so cool, I guess they charge you 50 bucks for the, for the really cool green color. So that's the stand that we're using. It's the TK 
It's the TK Racing Elite uh, rig. We have the uh, the stand, the three monitor stand, and the um, and the cockpit rig. Uh, it does come in a single monitor stand too, in black. This is a three monitor stand. We added the fourth monitor with a third party um, connector thingy. So whatever that thing is called. Question 3B. What dongle or hub are you using? Uh, the dongle we're using is the Hyperdrive 9-in-1 USB-C hub. It has a gigabit ethernet port. It has a single 4K 30 Hertz HDMI port. It has a UHS-1 micro SD card slot, and it has three five gigabit per second USB-A ports and a single 60 watt USB-C port and also a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. That's the dongle. Hyperdrive makes one that's probably about twice as expensive with a lot more ports. Uh, so uh, they do make a nice product. So if you need something with more ports, you can always look into something that's a little bit more um, porty than the one we have. All right, 3C, question 3C from John F9551. How are you connecting your monitors to the Mac Studio? All right, we're going to take a little trip behind it and show you that, and Wes is going to go through that with you. Okay, we are using a J5 Create. It's HDMI to USB-C adapter. It plugs to the back of the monitor, HDMI port, and it goes to the back of the, um, the Mac Studio with uh, the display port C's right there. Don't forget we have the 32 inch monitors connected to the computer with a adapter, a HDMI to USB-C uh, display port adapter. The 24 inch LG monitor, it goes straight uh, HDMI to the back of the computer, no adapters. All right, question four comes from several viewers. Uh, Viewer user-uk4so7vd56, and the second viewer is MartyG8117, and finally VUKOM, VUCOM, and they ask, what screens are we using? Okay, so obviously we're using three monitors. We're using three Acer 32-inch curved monitors, model LCD monitor Nitro XZ series, model number XZ322Q4. The fourth monitor up here is an LG 24-inch 75 hertz LED monitor, part number 24MP450-B.AUS. So those are the monitors we're using, and uh, we'll put links in the description below so you can just kind of click on the links and don't have to write all this down. Um, and then a second part to question four, user UQ4SO7VD56 also asks, how are the screens mounted? So we're gonna go back behind the computer again, and Wes is gonna explain how we mounted the monitors okay uh, on the TK uh, three monitor stand it's designed for flat panels now when you use a curved panel you'll have alignment issues on our uh, center monitor we have it uh, mounted straight to the monitor no spacers no nylon spacers or anything on our uh, left and right monitors we have some nylon spacers you can see them right there in the center of the screen one on both sides we have a uh, a taller one towards the closer to the center of the monitors. Same way on the other side, just reverse. And we got a smaller spacer. You can see it right there on that uh, outside end. And that right there gets it close. Then we have some other adjustments, like right here. After we get it close, we have to adjust it there. And we cheated it right here, too. This. We loosen up, we move that out to get it uh, adjusted a little better. So you got this adjustment, 
this adjustment, and then your nylon spacers. Got a bigger one there and a smaller one right there, and that helps the angle. So those arms kind of swing yes. in and out. Yes, this arm here, you loosen it right, loosen these up, you could uh, pull it this way or that way. But you have to get this center here adjusted too before before you put your monitors up. Just kind of, it's a trial and error. You have to hold the monitor up, get this piece here adjusted. And this is going to be a trial and error. Get your center monitor adjusted first, then adjust your two ends. Trial and error. And you have to try to figure out what spacers you need. And this adjusts this way and this way. Yes, this and the piece arms here. Adjust swinging yeah. back and forth. This piece here, the adjuster screws are between the monitor and this plate, so you have to adjust it before you put the monitor up. So you have to hold the monitor up, get it adjusted where you think it is, get this close. That's about it there. I got some bolts to show you what we use, what we bought and from Lowe's. took quite a bit of trial and error, yes, <laughs> didn't it? it? <laughs> but it was worth it because it really ended up, I mean, lining up pretty perfectly. So, and they're tight together. So it took quite a bit of trial and error, but uh, it, it ended up looking really, really good. We went to Lowe's and we bought a bunch of different sizes of screws and spacers. Nylon spacers, they have it there in the hardware. These screws here are four millimeter uh, dot 70 and, they and we have different sizes. I think the ones, I know we use either 30 or 25 and 20s is what we used. And best way to do it is make sure you don't get too long of a screw. Is take your original screw, which is this one right here. Take a spacer you want to try out and put this, the new screw up to it. Make sure it's not no longer than the screw and the spacer. Here's another one. I think this is the closer fit right here. This is the 30. That's the 25. And the other one, that's the original one. Yeah, you put that in there. Uh, that's kind of a trick. You have to put this screw to the get put this screw to the back plate, then put the spacer on, then put your monitor in that. It's definitely a two-person job. It's not easy. But worth uh, it. Yeah, worth it. it. Yeah, it don't look right unless you do it. Well, that wraps up this video. Hopefully, we answered your questions from the three monitor setup video. If you like this one, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, and smash the bell so you don't miss a Wing It Flight Sim video. I'm Richard. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, we'll catch you on the flip side. We are out.